everyone, today's the day. I'm gonna do the video about my wedding, which um, it was almost three months ago and I've been planning to do this for a while, but I just needed to write things down and I finally did. So I've got a long list of stuff to go through. I have separated most of it in sections, so I'll have them, you can see them on the timeline here, but also in the description, I'll have like the different times for the different things. So if you're interested in just the dress, for example, then you can just go to that section and that's fine. I will also have photos on the side of the screen, which is why I'm sat slightly to the side, uh, so you can see the photos there over there. Yeah, if you have any questions, I know that, you know, some people watch these videos uh, for the, you know, to just know stuff, because you want to know stuff, but other people are watching them because they're planning a wedding and it could be helpful. I know it was super helpful for me to see other wedding uh, videos out there. So yeah, if you have any questions about anything that I have not covered, then let me know in the comments. But I'm going to start with the when and budget, which I have combined into one section. We got married on the 10th of September 2021. So it was slightly after the restrictions for the pandemic were lifted here in the UK. There were still some left, but the wedding stuff was gone. For context, we got engaged in late August 2020. So it was just over a year after we got engaged that we got married. And what we did was as you know, as soon as we got engaged and we had obviously talked about getting married and all that stuff uh, before, but as soon as we got engaged, we decided to start thinking about how much we wanted to spend for the wedding and save month and month to that target. We knew we wanted it to be September, October of 2021 because um, high peak season, summer is super, super expensive, depending on where you're doing it, it can be really expensive. So yeah, we decided to do it slightly after that, but we hoped that the weather would still be good. And it was, it was supposed to rain all day. I mean, it's the UK. It was supposed to rain all day and up to, you know, even the day before, it was still saying that it was gonna rain all day. So we even bought umbrellas that we didn't even use. Thankfully, it didn't even rain and it was perfect lighting for photos because it was very light, the sky was white, so you didn't have any like sun shadows and that kind of thing. For me, it's the perfect weather for photos. I know some people feel awkward when you talk about money, but I feel like for this kind of video, is very helpful. You know, if I was watching a video and someone said they spent 50k on their wedding, I'd be closing that video because that does not interest me. It's not something that I can do or think about or, you know, get to that point. So I think it's helpful to talk about the money stuff, so I'm gonna say it, but I'm not gonna go into every single individual thing, but the overall was, and I thought it was a bit more, but I just checked my list, it was 17,500 pounds, uh, slightly rounded up, but 17,500 pounds for the whole thing. So all the legal fees, all, you know, dress, restaurant, ceremony, hotels, all of it. All of it, 17,500. I will say though, things like my dress, for example, that was a present from uh, my parents. That was their wedding gift, the dress. So I didn't have to pay for that, but I have included it in the total because I feel like that's more accurate to what the wedding actually cost. Now I'm gonna go into the section of wear and guests which again i have combined we wanted to have around we definitely wanted to have under 50 people we didn't want to have a huge wedding because cost and also because i don't know i feel like when you invite 100 people there's certainly people there who you don't necessarily care about that much i don't know is that me i'm not you know i don't know if people have 100 friends and 100 family members that you care about then fine but for us we knew we wanted under 50 we invited 45 people in the end but we only had 35 to 36 at the wedding. Uh, a few people from Spain just didn't come because, you know, uh, COVID, they didn't feel like it, whatever it is. Uh, 35, 36 people in the end, which I think was perfect. It was a really good amount of people. And we ended up doing a civil wedding. I am Catholic, I was raised Catholic, and if I have to, you know, things that I like and I don't, but if I have to take a box, I would take the Catholic box. But we ended up having a civil wedding because I'm not confirmed and to get married through the Catholic Church in the UK you have to be confirmed so I couldn't and then if we wanted to do it through the Church of England then you need to do it because of our situation you need to do it at your parish and that means that we had to pick somewhere local to do the meal and the reception and we couldn't find anywhere that we liked so we just went for the civil wedding. After looking everywhere for a ceremony venue, we ended up going to Oxford and we picked the um, 
The room is called Convocation House, which is within the Bodleian Library in Oxford, which is part of the University of Oxford. And it's honestly the most amazing venue. I mean, I'm biased, but we went to see it. I mean, from photos, we loved it, but we went to see it in person and it was like, yes, this is it. That can hold up to 100 people, but because it was COVID restrictions, at the time we did it, they only allowed 50% of capacity, so we could only have 50 people, but again, we only had 35, 36 in the end, so plenty of space for everyone, and yeah, good numbers in the end. We wanted to do the meal there as well initially, because they have a room next door that is amazing. We got a few photos there in the end, but that's where the infirmary in Harry Potter is filmed, and it's an amazing room, but if we did it there, it would have been about £3,000 more expensive. And also, because it's obviously the University of Oxford, very old building, they don't have a kitchen. So basically they have to cook this stuff somewhere else, bring it in and heat it up somehow, I don't know. And we thought that wasn't going to be as good quality as what we ended up doing. So because cost and because, you know, quality, we decided not to do it there in the end. So after looking again everywhere, we found this restaurant, which is basically less than five minute walk from the um, from Convocation House, from the Bodley Library, and it's called Number One Ship Street. It's a normal restaurant, and we just booked the whole thing for the day. And what they do is a minimum spend cost, which they say, you know, this is the amount, I don't know if it's true, but they said this is the amount that we would have earned if we had it open to the public as a restaurant, and that basically covered everything for us. The hire, the food, drinks, everything. We basically had a free bar for people the whole time because it was covered within that cost. And we had a reception, like a canopy reception to begin with, that was about four or five canapes per person with uh, mimosas. And then we had the meal, had a four course, it was a four course meal. We had an amouche bouche, which is basically like a tiny soup, I don't even know and then starter, main, dessert. We gave people three options each, I think, for per course, we had three options for people. And it was really good because we went there, we talked to the owner and the chef, and basically we said, this is what we wanna have. And they said, okay, that's possible, okay, that's not possible. But we basically built the menu with them, and we had things that we wanted to have, and then we also gave people three different options per thing. And then after that, we had, in the evening, uh, like cheese, meat, platter, breads kind of thing free bar for everyone aside from you know the wine of the meal and everything and we ended up getting to the end of the minimum cost after we actually left it's when the bar tab like ran out and yeah so basically everyone had free drinks the whole time they even gave one of our family members or one of my husband's family members uh he said oh I'll give them a good bottle of wine and they gave him like a 300 pound bottle of wine what? And we didn't know till later, but yeah, crazy. But that was still covered within that amount of money that we paid. We didn't have a cake, and that's one of the things where we saved money because we already had desserts. I feel like a lot of people just don't have the wedding cake when they go to places and there's already a dessert. So we didn't have a wedding cake, and that basically saved us like 400 or 500 pounds because they're so expensive. That was basically the venue. Next, I'm gonna go into the photographer stuff. And I'm gonna say who it was because, I mean, I posted it on Instagram as well, but he was amazing. His name was uh, Daniel McLean, and if you're looking him up, it's Daniel McLean Photography. He was amazing. He was honestly like the nicest guy. He was just like one more in the wedding, and he was just super friendly, super like easy to talk to. His photos, I loved them, and when I saw online, it was the kind of editing style that I liked. So yeah, really happy. And we got him a hotel the night before as well because we wanted him to come in the morning to our hotel for photos. And something we did was uh, have photos in the morning before the ceremony. So because the whole wedding was in the city, we wanted to have some photos with plants and greenery and that kind of thing. So we went to a hotel uh, the night before, which is the Voco Oxford Thames Hotel, which is basically a 20 minute drive from the center of Oxford. And they had like grounds with, you know, gardens and plants and that kind of thing. So in the morning, um, we did see each other in the morning. We did not really care about that. And we had our family members uh, go down to the grounds to have a few photos there in the morning before we went to the ceremony. We didn't have video because I just feel like photos, you can show them to people, you can have them in your house, you can give them to family members. But when would I ever go back and watch that video? I feel like that's not something I would do. So we just didn't have video and we saved a ton of money on that because wedding photography is expensive. 
wedding videography is even like on another level I do not want to spend that money so we didn't have that and very happy that we didn't I do not regret that decision whatsoever and that is the photography side I mean I swear that photographer if you have a wedding in the UK if you're thinking about that please look him up because he was absolutely amazing and yeah loved him if I ever have any event where I need a photographer I would definitely go to him because yeah super super happy with him then I'm gonna go into my dress and the outfit and that kind of thing. I had a dress from uh, Rosa Clara, which is a Spanish designer, but I did buy it in the UK. So I don't know if they charged me more for that reason, but I don't know. It was the style called uh, Corot, C-O-R-O-T, and it cost me 1800 pounds. Plus all the different like fittings and stuff that I had to do, they had to make it smaller because they ordered me a bigger size and that kind of thing but yeah and I did want a few different things done to it but that's the dress I had I loved it from the start and I am so sad that I'm never gonna wear that dress again I feel like I wore it basically because I went for the three uh, like fittings and the day that I tried it on I feel like I wore it four or five times and the time that I put it on on the wedding day it was sad that it was like the last time that I was gonna wear it and put it on and I don't know absolutely adore that dress and again bias it's the one that I bought but I honestly think it's the most beautiful dress and I don't know I love all the detail it had I put photos of the back here which is super open and the front as well it had a big like V over here and but it was quite close to your skin so like nothing moved or showed or anything like that one thing I didn't do to the dress or I didn't do it but I asked them to do it Initially when I put it on, it felt like the circles around the chest area were quite visible. So I asked them to put like a white or ivory fabric from here to like the skirt. So it covered that bit a bit better and that's one of the things I did. And second thing I did, which is something that I always wonder, is the bra situation. I didn't wear a bra with it, but what they did do was to sew this one in some like bra cups into the dress so I felt like I had some support it felt like I was kind of wearing a bra but not really like nothing could move and I didn't like actually have to put on a separate piece of clothing so that's what I did with the bra situation I will say things uh, bad things about the dress one how hot the skirt got I was very lucky that it was not a cold day it was not super hot but it was good weather but once I got inside during the meal my legs started to sweat, like actual sweat dripping from my legs from how hot my skirt was getting. I had to put my arms on the tables, which thankfully, they were copper, so they were quite cooling to me. Cannot even tell you, yeah, how hot that skirt got because it had so much tool and so many layers, but again, it made it move and flow quite nicely, which I loved. Second, going up and down the stairs was not easy. I had to basically pick up my whole skirt and walk up like that. And the restaurant had like multiple levels, so yeah, I had to do that a few times. Bathroom situation, I went to the bathroom once from leaving the hotel in the morning to getting back to the hotel at night. I went to the bathroom once because I could not bother to do that again. I basically did not have anything to drink, not even water, because I could not be bothered to go to the bathroom. Sounds awful, but yeah, what I did do was bin bag trick that you might see online basically in my uh, handbag which I had laying around people had it I didn't know where my handbag was multiple times during the day but I did have a bin bag inside oh hi Mimi I did have a bin bag inside and basically you go to the bathroom make a hole in the bag and you use that to put your whole dress in it when you go to the bathroom so I did that once uh, with my sister but I couldn't be bothered to do it again and to have people come into the bathroom and see me do that so I avoided it and the other thing is you can't walk backwards once you have the dress on you can only move forward there's no turning back you step on the train of the dress and then it doesn't work you have to go forwards and yeah that's like the few things aside from when we were walking around Oxford getting photos basically I kept cleaning the streets uh, there were loads of leaves on the floor and I kept cleaning them, I kept taking them with me in the dress and we've got photos of that and that's like the only few things. Then other stuff that I wore, I have these uh, shoes here which are from Aldo, you can see it over there, bought them on ASOS, basically 45 pounds or so and you can see they're a bit pinkish and yeah, not super tall because my husband's not much much taller than me, also more comfortable. And those are the shoes that I wore, I thought if I buy white shoes never wearing them again so I bought these in the hopes that I can wear them again at some point 
Then I have this bracelet on, which is a gift from my mother-in-law and it's just a gold infinity sign over there. And yeah, very nice and dainty. And then earrings, I had these from Ana Luisa, New York, very cheap, 35 pounds or so. And then for my head, I had this headband, which I'll put on right now because I really, really like it. And this is from ASOS, six pounds. That's it. If you look at it closely, you can tell. Otherwise, no. No one can tell that this was six pounds. And then makeup and hair. I did my own hair, just waved it a little bit. And makeup, did my own makeup. I was wearing the same lipstick I'm wearing right now, which is Velvet Teddy from MAC. Favorite, all-time favorite lipstick. Love it. So I had to wear it. Saved a little money on that. And then I just felt like I like the way I do my makeup. I know when you get it professionally done, sometimes I do it slightly different than you. So you see yourself a bit different. And I wanted to see myself like I normally do and I don't know so I did it myself and saved some money on that as well I was gonna do fake lashes but then on the day even though I tested it beforehand and it worked fine on the day I was I don't know more stressed or I don't know it didn't really work and I didn't want to ruin the eyeliner I had already done so I said no to the fake lashes and yeah that was the only thing that like didn't go right if that makes sense but not really bothered then going into the decorations, that's something that we saved up a lot on because the venue was so nice, it didn't really need any decorations. We did have some flowers and I just had my bouquet and then two more like big arrangements of flowers if that makes sense. And that was about £325 because a friend of my mother-in-law's who's a florist made them so she charged us less than she would have. Flowers are super expensive so if you can save in flowers, definitely do that. Then we just had a big A1 sign for the entrance of the ceremony, which was required by law, but not like a nice one, but you know, we got a nice one from papier.com and then that's the same place where we got the invitations from, which I can put one here if you want to see that. And then for the meal, we just had these little um, name tags here. This one's bright, I don't know if you can see it, but we just had people's names. These were from Etsy, about 30 or 40 pounds for all of them. I can't even remember, but very, very cheap. And then I'm gonna go into the actual day and yeah, how that run and what we did and all that stuff. So as I said, we were in that hotel and we got dressed and ready in the same room because we just were not bothered about that, about seeing each other before the wedding and that stuff, so we did it. The photographer came, we went and did the photos in the grounds and that stuff. And then we had some cars to take us to the ceremony, so of course my husband and his family went first and then he started greeting all the guests at the venue and all that stuff. And my dad and I left uh, the last ones from the hotel. It was a bit stressful because the car came way early, so I had to ask the guy. I didn't want to get to the venue before people got there, so I had to tell the guy, can we just wait here? And we ended up waiting for about 30 minutes, sat in his car. He got a photo with us because he was like, oh, we always take photos. I always take photos with like people going to a wedding and then he was showing us photos from his wedding and it was this whole thing. But then I got to the venue and there were still like two people who got there after me. So like they saw me, which is fine. But when they opened the door, I could see like everyone there and my husband like waiting and I was like, oh my God, so many people. I hate people staring at me like... It makes me really really anxious so I was like oh no so I got a bit anxious there and you just have to get to the venue like 15 minutes before it starts because they do like the final legal checks they ask you for the hundredth time if you've been married before and that kind of thing check that your name is correct in the documents and all that stuff and there were two ladies who were gonna open the door for me to walk in which was very nerve-wracking it was like two ladies on the sides and they were like staring at me they started playing the music which if you're wondering we had um like an orchestra version of i see the light from tangled going uh for me to walk down the aisle so they started playing it and i could hear it and they were like just you know say yes whenever you want us to open so i was like and they went to open it and two huge doors everyone there standing staring at me and i was like oh god and we started walking down the aisle, my dad and I, and he started to walk a bit fast, so I had to like pull his arm and be like, not noticeably, but like stop walking that fast. I mean, it wasn't a long aisle, so we couldn't take like, it couldn't be like a five second walk, you know, so yeah. But that was fine, and then uh, the ceremony was super quick, it was about 25 minutes, and that was it. I had to stand the whole time, which was, again... I was getting quite anxious because I'm someone and it was a bit warm and if I'm warm and I'm standing I have uh, fainted in the past, I get a bit dizzy and that kind of thing so I was a bit nervous and I was getting anxious 
standing there. So I had to like calm myself while I was there. Because I was like, do not make a scene, do not faint in the middle of your wedding. It was fine in the end, got myself together and then yeah. We did the ceremony, you do all the talking bits that you have to say and then they sit you down to like sign the paper. At that point I got to sit down and I was like, yes, thank God I sat down. After that I was really relaxed and calm and all the nerves were gone and I was just fine, this is done. And then yeah, the ceremony finished, we walked down the aisle again to like the end and came out of the venue to walk into the other room that I told you about um, to get a few photos and meanwhile we also went back into the ceremony room to get some photos like by ourselves in there meanwhile the guests were um, like doing two cues I guess uh, down the entrance to do bubbles because we couldn't do confetti over there because it's obviously Oxford, center of Oxford they just don't allow you to have confetti so we did uh, bubbles and yeah we bought those for the guests so then we walked out again with the bubbles, got photos doing that and then did a bunch of like group photos, family photos, talked to people and all that stuff. At that point people went to the reception venue, to the restaurant to have the canopy reception and the drinks and my husband and I and the photographer went to walk around Oxford to get more photos and I'll post here my favourite photo from the whole thing, I think, because it's just like so casual. We're clearly dressed in like, you know, we just had a wedding, we just got married, but we're just like walking down the street. You can see like people in the back and I don't know, I feel like it's a nice, a really nice photo and I really, really like it. So yeah, but we walked around, that's when I was, you know, getting all the cleaning the streets of Oxford with my dress, which got ruined at the bottom because I kept, you know, picking up everything from the streets. But we had loads of people like congratulating us as we were walking. Uh, an American couple like literally stopped us and started talking to us for about five minutes, which I was like, okay, very nice that you want to say congrats, but <laughs> I need to get somewhere, you know? So that was quite nice, that was fine. And then we got back to the restaurant, did the reception. That's when I finally went to the bathroom and my only, my only bathroom trip. And then, yeah, we had the meal. The food was amazing. I'm slightly sad that I don't have photos from the actual food. Like I was too excited eating it and the photographer was upstairs eating his own meal and that kind of thing. And then, yeah, we didn't have any speeches because I'm not a speech person. I don't necessarily enjoy wedding speeches. I mean, people can do whatever they want, that's fine. But for me, they make me a bit anxious. You know, sometimes people want to be funny and they say stuff and it's not necessarily funny. And it just makes me a bit anxious, so I was like, I don't really want that at my wedding, so we decided not to do them, and it was fine, it was, you know, it was a casual day, it was very us, and that's, I think, the number one tip that people always say, but I think it's 100% true, if you are gonna have a wedding, just do whatever you wanna do that day, make it your own, it doesn't have to, you know, we didn't have dancing, we didn't have that kind of thing, because it's not us, and, you know, if you don't wanna have dancing, you don't have it, if you wanna have dancing, have it, if you don't want a cake, don't do a cake, if, you know, Whatever you want to do, it's your wedding, you don't have to make it what a wedding should be like. A wedding is you getting married. Aside from that point, it can be whatever you want it to be. So yeah, if you don't want to invite people, don't invite people, do whatever you want to do. So we didn't have speeches, it was just a normal meal and then chatting to friends. There was some music and stuff, but you know, like a normal day of socializing with friends and family, I guess. And because I'm not a very sociable person, sounds awful, but true, I don't necessarily love socializing with people. Around 9 or so p.m. I started to get a bit tired and I was like, you know what, I'm not enjoying myself anymore, I want this to be over kind of thing. So I sent it to my husband and then he started saying goodbye to people, which took about 45 minutes. But at that point, uh, we said, okay, let's go back to the hotel, like, that's it, like, we're done, that was, you know, fun, we don't want it to drag. So us and our close family went back to the hotel. I think a few people stayed there and actually I think the tab ran out at the bar like just a few minutes after we left and then a few people went to other pubs and stuff to like continue to party or whatever people do, I, I don't even know. But yeah, that was it and we got back to the hotel, my feet were stuck to the shape of the shoe, which was awful, but yeah, it was a really nice day and it was the day that we wanted it to be and yeah, it was our wedding and it was our nice day. So yeah, as I said before, if you guys have any questions about things that I haven't mentioned, then please let me know in the comments below and I can get back to you. But that's going to be it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you guys later with another video. Bye!